You know, what I tried to do was balance two things. My desire to be involved and engaged and on the ground, which is uh, uh, how I am uh, generally wired to act, and my desire to follow the norm of transportation secretaries, allowing NTSB to really uh, lead the initial stages of the public-facing work. I'll do some thinking about uh, whether I got that balance right. Uh, but I think the most important thing is, first of all, making sure that the residents here have what they need. Uh, something that from our piece of the puzzle, DOT, we were working on from day one. And making sure we do something for the future. Uh, we, we can talk about process, and that's, fairly, uh, that's, that's perfectly fair. But I don't want people pointing to process as a way to get away from the fundamental questions of rail safety regulation and accountability and whether we're going to make it tougher or we're, whether we're going to allow it to continue being watered down. But also, Norfolk Southern and the other freight rail companies need to stop fighting us every time we try to do a regulation in order to hold them accountable and their other railroad companies accountable for their safety record. And what we've seen is industry goes to Washington and they get their way. They got their way on the ECP rule. They got their way on a Christmas tree of regulatory changes that the last administration made on its way out the door in December of 2020. I think they're getting their way on the fines being too low. I'm sorry, but uh, if the biggest fine we can charge on a violation is $250,000 or, or less, and that's an egregious hazmat violation to get somebody killed, that is not enough for a multi-billion dollar company. Well, we're acting on it with the authorities we have and calling on members of Congress to act on, a, on it with the authorities they have, and the railroads not to wait on us to require them to do the right thing on their own. Well, one thing he could do is uh, uh, express support for reversing the deregulation uh, that uh, happened on his watch. I heard him say he had nothing to do with it, even though it was in his administration. Uh, so if he had nothing to do with it, and uh, they did it in his administration against his will, uh, maybe he could come out and say that, uh, uh, that uh, he supports us moving in a different direction. Uh, we're not afraid to own our policies when it comes to raising the bar on regulation. And uh, I've got to think that uh, uh, him indicating that this is uh, something that everybody, no matter how much you disagree on politics and presidential campaigns, can get behind. Higher fines, tougher uh, uh, regulations on safety, Congress unti untying our hands on breaking rules, all the other things that go with that, uh, that'd be a nice thing for him to do. Look, again, I'm here for the work and not for the politics. Uh, you can sense when you talk to local leaders and local residents that they're getting pretty sick of the politics, too. And this national uh, uh, ideological layer that's been added into all of this when they're just trying to figure out if they're going to be safe. And there's no question that there have been enormous amounts of both information and misinformation injected into this situation none of which is to the benefit of the community uh, when it comes to that misinformation. So I think, so I lost my train of thought. Um, well, that's what I had to say about that.